Hi everybody. Um, today, I had to order a new pack of uh, tarot cards because the ones that I use, the ones that I love so much, I, I have, you know, they were getting kind of old and I, in me trying to restore them myself, I kind of messed up. So, um, as I use the cards of the Orisha, the Orisha Tarot by Zolrin and Durkin, and it has an English and Spanish translation on each page. It describes each card. It has um, spreads in the back, a lot of information. It is, oh, how many pages? Beside the advertisements in the back, which are pretty interesting stuff. All Orisha based um, and Yoruba and Santeria based things. It has a glossary in the back also. So it's up to 339 pages without the advertisements in the back and the bibliography. Okay, and I got this not a long time ago um, because I had to order it. Actually, I had ordered, I got this because I left the previous one in Panama in 2015. So that's two years ago, and you see. I have used it and it's got getting old, but I love this book. It's very helpful. So, and I love these cards. I've had them longer than I've had the book. And they're, they're beautiful, 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 beautiful cards. I love them. Love them. The drawings are nice. The back is beautiful. It's my color. But along the way, they started to get a little dog-eared. So I, genius that I am, said, oh, I have laminating stuff and I can laminate the card, right? Keep in it, you know, and then I'll cut it down and I'll be able to preserve these for quite a long spell. Because if you see, they start to bend because of the material, that they, the, the kind of uh, cardboard or whatever material that they use to make it. They're bigger than an average deck. They're bigger than an average deck. And so you can't shuffle them this way. You can shuffle them like this. And after a while, and they loosen up a bit, I was able to shuffle them like that, right? Good stuff. Okay. But as I said, they started to get a little dog-eared and bent, and <sighs> I was trying to take the easy way out. And so, of course, I messed one or two up when I started the procedure, and I just gave it up, and I said, Patty, go ahead on and buy a deck. So, I'm going to keep this deck. Now, I was reading some of the reviews, even though I'm very familiar with the, with the cards and all. You know, I, I know the, the cards and I know the same authors. When I went on Amazon, um, the, the outside drawing was, was pretty different. This is, like I said, the one, original one that I had. So, um, this was what they had available on Amazon, right? The uh, Tarot of the Orisha, same name. Illustrated by Durkan and created by Zorak, Zorak, Z-O-L-R-A-K. Okay, it's the box is smaller than the book, but of course on the television, I mean on the computer, on the website, it didn't look like that. You can't tell. So. But I said, well, same creators, got to be the same cards, right? So I ordered them, and they came today. So I decided I was going to share the birth of the new tarot of the Orisha deck in our house, okay? So, uh, and I ordered this Sunday. No, today's Wednesday. I ordered this Monday. And uh, they're here already. It's Wednesday afternoon, so... Excellent, excellent, excellent. So here we go. So it was wrapped in cellophane, which I already removed and threw away. So the way that we get into this, 
it's a very beautiful box beautiful box um, looks let's see what happens looks like it might be a little different than my cards okay so it has a book called the uh, Tarot of the Orisha's Companion book and we have uh, looks like Oya oh yeah, on the front Very pretty. Back. Okay, so now, and here's a, this book is laying on top of some cards, like this. So the book was here. And this ribbon is here. And you use the ribbon to help pull the book out. And also to pull the cards out of the little shelf they have inside of the box and now you have a box and this box is very pretty it's pretty heavy um, not heavy but it's got a little weight to it a good weight to it um, and it kind of magnetizes itself closed when it shuts so that's pretty I always like aesthetics right so this book is much smaller than the other book Right. and it's in English on the front whereas this one was also in Spanish El Taro de los Orishas right? and it was bilingual English to Spanish guide to 77 cards of the Orisha Tarot and it was like I said each page you would get your explanation in English and in Spanish side by side for each card so anything in this book that they're talking about except the advertisements and the glossary is side-by-side -side Spanish English translation let's see what happens in the companion book companion guide to tarot of the Orisha this book opens the door to the meaning and origins of each of the decks breathtaking full-color cards the first 13 cards of the major Canna depict the supernatural beings or the Orisha, which represent archetypes of sacred energy. The other 12 major Arcana cards portray symbols such as karma, the earth, and the guardian angel. The 52 cards of the minor Arcana are divided into four groups representing four elements, considered by many to be far more potent, be a far more potent tool for magic and divination than the traditional tarot. The Tarot of the Orishas will bring your own inner mysteries to light. Mm. Okay. And you can like Llewellyn Publishers on Facebook. Please do. They've been doing good work for decades. Okay, so let's look inside. And what do I see? Okay. So this, this, this book is all English. There's no Spanish in here. Nope. Nope. Not at all. No Spanish, just English. That's the same um, information, the meanings of the cards, the comparison to the traditional uh, tarot deck and the Roman Catholic and Greek deities that each um, of the Orisha, according to them, uh, synchronize with. It tells you how to take care of the cards, you know, how to get them ready. This book is hmm, without, well, with the glossary. They don't have advertisements in the back. So, 296 pages excluding the how to contact the author 296 pages including the bibliography this time so it's a smaller book it's lighter less pages but less informational I would say because if you're someone who um, has clients or you yourself 
read uh, Espanol and you order this new new deck from the publishers, you're going to have to see whether or not they have it in Spanish before you order it because it's not included in this. Okay. But it's still got the drawings of each of the cards on the pages. Let's see, you get the meanings. And you get um, reversals. Upright, upside down. Mm -hmm. For some of the cards that that pertains to. Some some cards in the Orisha deck don't really um, change too much meaning whether they're up or down. The point is is that the, that, that card came out on you for your reading. Okay, so now. Here's the deck. Yeah. My previous deck, let me take out the misfit cards that I messed up. Shame on me. Okay. So it's a wee bit smaller. It's more like a regular playing card size. The new, the new deck is more like a regular playing card size. I can hold these in my palm, so I should be able to shuffle them all kinds of ways. Well, that might be a little helpful. We'll see. It might take a while for me to be able to do that. Though. Look at me. Don't do this. Don't try this at home with the, with the scissor. <laughs> On camera. Okay. Most, most people have enough fingernail that they can do that without ugh, that happening. Okay. So let me feel. Not the same, same quality of the card as far as uh, they're not hard like a playing card is. You know, they're not. See the the, the the crease that had happened in this card already. So, anyway, as much as I use this card, these cards, I guess I better. Um, maybe I can have a professional person uh, laminate them for me. Or something. This is uh, not boating well. Cause I, I was only really um, ordering the deck, not the box, not the book. I was surprised it came with the book. But I'm still using my old book. I think depends. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, they're beautiful cards in any respect. I love this. This is purple. If you can't tell. And this is silver and all of these stars are gold and they're beautiful okay so now let's look at the drawings on these cards well the drawings are different let me see if I can find okay so this is the three of water uh, let me see if I can find a three of water in here and let's let's compare and contrast ah, here we go So now, new card, old card. Okay, so it's the same drawing, basically. The colors, okay, so around the edges of the card, these cards are white, you know, black lines outside of the drawing and the background is white. These cards are uh, a rust, uh, golden color with white writing okay more like uh, more like a natto shun and, and oya I feel and they all have that same edging all around and the edges are, are plain too so there's no gold gilding or anything like that on it but neither were these either so that's the figure now that was upside down. Okay, so this is the figure right side up. This is the figure right side up. This card has, the old card deck had three of water, Roman numerals, but in Spanish, three de agua, and then three of water in English, and three of agua 
in um, French, it seems. Yeah, they use um, Lukumi, Lukumi uh, words or Brazil, yeah, words. You know, so there was more flexibility, I guess, in, in who you were reading for because you could use, or, or who was doing the reading rather, because you had all these different uh, languages to tell you what the cards meant and symbolic symbols on the bottom also. And people who that pertains to would recognize that too. Okay. Yep, great symbolism. So these cards were more informational, I guess, if you needed it. But if you're just reading English and you're only reading for yourself or your clients are all English speakers and that, or that's not a thing, then you've got, you have the same information, just less of it. These are very, very wobbly. These, these are very light. They feel light. You know, as far as they, I think that I ruined these quicker than I ruined those. I've had those for years. I've traveled. These cards have traveled with me every vacation, everywhere I went. When I went on a cruise, when I went to Panama, when I went to Barbados, when I went to Santo Domingo, when I went to Hawaii, when I went to uh, St. Martin, I went, the ship went there. Sinai, which is uh, part of the Dominican Republic, went there, if I'm saying it right. Um, we, I had a cruise, it was nine days, and I went to Puerto Rico, which is not a different country, but it's a different place. Um, Puerto Rico, um, hmm, a few other little places, Martinique, St. Martin, the St. Thomas Virgin Islands, yes. Um, very beautiful trip, very nice, met some really, really nice people on the trip, made friends with some people, made enemies with others, but they were friends, at least while we were on the ship. <laughs> and um, so I, I, I'm, I'm attached to them too, so they're not going in the basura at all, they're not getting thrown away. I'm going to put them away and I'm going to keep them with my boveda and uh, see what happens. The main reason I was going to keep them is because I thought that I, if any cards got damaged here, I could interchange them, but that's definitely not happening. So that might be the other thing I need to do is get another deck of these on standby to replace the ones as they fall apart, which I feel they will. Just my opinion. Anyway, if I hadn't sh shuffled the deck, you, they were all in order, but I was busy talking and forgot not to shuffle. Now this is beautiful. And this is the Four of Water. Beautiful drawing of the Four of Water. The colors are very pretty, vibrant. This is the Five of Water. Gorgeous. Um, let's see what else we have here. Let's see what can find. Okay. This is Female Issue. issue. Female Issue. Have Ogun. Now, this character, Ogun, was the front cover of the book, the previous book. See, that was him. Those of you who aren't familiar, these cards are, as I said, cards of the Orisha. So, Yanza. which I believe is Oya. I think that's what it is. And Chango, who is gracing the front cover of the box. And that's him with that. See? They're beautiful cards anyway. The artwork is gorgeous. Can't take that from them. Oh, well, this is Oya. This is Oya. That's what they're using for Oya. Okay. I see, I don't, this is Oshun, for those of you who, that's important to see, because all of us, all of us daughters of Oshun, and all us, us that want to be daughters of Oshun, there's her call. Oshun is about love. 
and Yemiya, beautiful. All the daughters and sons of Yemiya. Gorgeous. Okay, so they're pretty. Now, some of the reviews that I read said that some of the cards were missing. Okay, now this happens to be on the top of this deck here. So this is the the man. This, uh, this is a card representing the man. This is the new deck. This is the previous deck. All of the words around the, the white border are translations of the man in Spanish and Nakumi. Okay. But the character, you know, we cleaned him up a little bit. You know, fattened up his uh, laterals and biceps, pet, whatever, you know, all that stuff. So, he's looking a little more manly, but still beautiful. And I'm really going to hang on to these cards, my old ones, because I, the, I love them. Anyway, this is, uh, but they're beautiful in any extent. So, that is the differences. <clears throat> the difference in size <laughs> and, you know, not that size matters in this case, it doesn't, but you like to feel you gotta get used to the feel of the smaller card, All right? So let me see if it will allow me to. Yeah, I can shuffle that way. I can shuffle like this. Ooh, I know how to do that. I used to play spades. Still can actually. Very good at it, also, folks. And I can do. So these are more flexible because my hands are smaller. You know, they're smaller in my hands. And they feel okay. If I can get these laminated, then they might be worth it, it will be worthwhile probably for me to get them laminated. I'll have to check and see how much that would cost me. But to the makers and manufacturers of these cards, Mr. Llewellyn products. Why don't y'all think about that? I understand that this is a resale value by making them so flimsy. But come on, they're not cheap. They are, these cards are not cheap. And, and they're not that easy to find either. They're becoming more and more popular, but still not a lot of people use them. Not a lot of people use them. But they're beautiful. So, that's the unboxing show for the tarot of the Orisha deck. So, since these are brand new babies, <clears throat> we have to, I like to do a few things to cards when I get them. And I, it's really not a ritual, so to speak. It's kind of, you know, based on how I feel and how soon I really want to use the cards. Because they have to at least spend one night, at least, if not a whole week, on the altar. So, what I do, even though they just came out the box, somebody had to handle them before they got in the box. So, I blow a little smudge on them, a little bit of sage rather on them. If I can ever get my sage to light, I'm trying to use the candle. This is white sage, and I ordered this online too. Not, I, you know, I could go to the store and get them, but it's not that close by. And sometimes I get a good price and uh, bulk qual quantity. So just smudge them. 
mode. You could do this with smudge, you can do it with cigar also, tobacco. That's part of it too. So if you don't have the sage, don't worry about it. But get the tobacco, get a cigar. Go down to the store, get somebody to bring one home for you. Get take you steal your husband's, your son's. It don't have to be anything fancy. White owl. Anybody, whatever. I don't know the brands. But you use the cigar and you blow smoke on it. Uh, you don't have to smoke it per se. This looks real strange, right, on, t on the video, but you get the idea. You're going to smudge the cards. Okay. Once you get the, the going, sometimes what I even do is just take some of the sage out of the bundle. Instead of leaving it bundled, I'll take pieces of it and light those. And that gives me enough smudging for purposes as long as you make it big enough you don't burn yourself when you go to um, light it but these are kind of fresh so it's hard to sometimes get them to do it mm -hmm. they go out quickly but some time to bundle. It takes a while to light, so you can light a couple of sprigs. It'll do the same job. And you can use one sprig to light another sprig, so you get a couple going. And then you get the smoke going. And you can shuffle. You can shuffle the cards right over the pot or the dish or whatever you have your sage burning in. And it'll be just enough for the purposes of what you need them for. Because you're not going to burn this whole sage at one time anyway to do this. So why not just take what you need. It'll last longer. And it'll do the same job. Okay. I'm just placing them on top. This particular bowl is large enough that they can sit atop for a whole while and let the smudging continue. Wow. I continue to talk. So what I'm I when I was reading, getting ready to order these on Monday, I read the reviews even though I had had the cards previously. And there were complaints about the fact that uh, even in the uh, previous deck that the drawings were very European looking and this is supposed to be an Orisha deck and this is African um, spiritual guidance and the Orisha are portrayed in the Tarot of the Orisha more um, European than African and that's bothersome to some people for good reason but that's the choices that they made by the people who wrote the book so if we're gonna leave if we're gonna leave our culture to have been stolen from us, told negative things about it so that we were repelled by it. Don't be mad when they start to usurp it. 
because we're shunning it. We don't want nothing to do with it. Because that's what we were taught about our traditions. But what are they doing? It's like anything in our community. The hair. Who's, who's selling the hair in, in, in your neighborhood? How many black um, black owned hair weave places are there? You might find a, a, you know, you might have lots of beauty parlors, of course. Beauty parlors need supplies and they need customers and women need these things, men need these things. We're going to these places and we spend our good money because we allowed our culture, the thing that is <laughs> the thing that, that preoccupies us the most, our hair half the time, the thing that we, from uh, baby to old lady, we try to manage our hair, right? Or somebody's hair for them. We learn to comb our hair and do our hair and plait our hair and brush our hair and straighten our hair and blow dry our hair braid it and cornrow it and lock it and roll it and weave it and jerry curl it and perm it and all the things that we do because we were told that our hair is naturally is not naturally attractive and even without that there are things that our hair needs because it's, we're not in our natural environment, it, it might need a lot more than it would have were we in our no, normal environments, or at least we'd be using different types of um, moisturizing or whatever it is that we would have to do that was part of our tradition and our culture before we were brought out of that. <clears throat> Against our will, kidnapped during the African Holocaust. So, the thing that we preoccupy ourselves with, other cultures have found a way to profit off of because we allow them to, because we leave it to them to do. And yes, Madam C.J. Walker was the first female billionaire millionaire, billionaire, whatever. She was rich. <laughs> but, and, and sure, everybody went to beauty school, everybody learned how to do hair, always going to have clients. It's, it's a very rewarding job. It's a lot of, you know, time on your feet, but it's good money, it's low overhead, and uh, it's a needed service that is provided by, by artists. Um, but we kind of, everything else that's involved in that, pro the products that we use and all these other things. Yes, we do have um, manufacturers who um, portray themselves as African American manufacturers, uh, or they, they may or may not really, really be, but we do have that and we do have folks who aren't but the salespeople, the person at the counter that you go to get your things from the person you're turning over your cash to directly a lot of times they're not of our culture even though we're the majority of their customers so I think that we need to think about those type of things also and that's part of the whole idea of what we want to do here. We want to start to take our culture back when we can, where we can, or at least let it be known that that's our culture. And if they can learn and use this, these Orisha, <laughs> so certainly we should be able to. Certainly. There are European countries, um, places in Denmark, Norway, places like that, that they are Yoruba, they are Ifa practices, practitioners rather, and there's no shame about it. They walk the streets in their garb, they're white, 
and these are Caucasian men and women, lots of Caucasian men, um, practice Ifa um, in European countries. And it's happening here too in America also a little bit by bit because this is about nature. This is about the secrets of the universe that are revealed and, and work through natural means. Um, so it's environmentally friendly, to say the least. Um, nothing is wasted. Everything is put to use and consumed. And uh, there's a gratitude. There's a gratitude involved in, in, in this practice. So we have to start thinking about the things that we are afraid of or the things that we find suspect or we're not familiar with and remember the root of the lie or the lesson. What were you told and taught about yourself and your culture by those around you? Those who were well-meaning and those who may not have been so well-meaning and others of them who were ignorant. And ig ignorance can come from parents Ignorance can come from um, siblings, uh, mates in school, teachers, preachers, pastors, nannies, maids, housekeepers, whoever you uh, involve yourself with, whoever has an influence on you, those people who you attend church with, you know, the sisters in the pew next to you or your mothers, sisters, aunts, all of that, uncles. Everybody has their opinion, especially about, you know, traditional Ifa worship. And that's because we've been taught it was bad from the moment we were brought here in chains. They told us that our words weren't understandable and we had to learn a language that they were speaking at the at the at the end of the lash at the end of the lash that was the for not learning that lesson for not understanding those words so we had to hurry up and learn it the survival it told us our culture our foods everything we didn't have access to our foods our vegetables whatever sustained us, we had to eat whatever they gave us. And when you're starving, you'll eat anything, but try to make it as palatable as you can for yourself and your family, for whatever you had. So we were very, very inventive, ingenious, because we had to be. <clears throat> well, you know what, folks, we have to be now, because it's getting late, and the United States for those of you who live in the United States, you all know what's going on. And the people who are watching this that don't live in the United States, you know what's going on too. We are headed for something that we don't know nothing about. And we, we have to survive by our wits. And this, these are, these are where our wits started. These are the roots of our, of our wits. And we have to make sure that we get the word out and bring everybody back. All of us, we're family. We are brothers and sisters. We all come from a common place. Maybe different places on the continent of Africa, but definitely other places. And after that, other places. So we're here now. And, and this is our, the place we call home. And we used to it running a certain way and we're trying to make it better. But all that blood and all that fight and all those tears and all that honor, everything was not shed for foolishness for us to roll into the hands of, of someone who's gonna just make us miserable and not give our children the chance to fly and succeed. as much as they took from us, some of us were able to rise. All of us, 
all of our ancestors were able to survive and rise or else we wouldn't be here to talk about it. We have to make sure that we survive and we have to make sure that our traditions continue. So that's the purpose of all of this. So today we did part of it. I wanted to share this part of it with you. So when you get tarot cards, if that's what you choose to use, or if that's one of your methods, and you don't have to be clairvoyant, any of that. The card is going to do what the card is going to do. And you don't have to use it because you have clients. You can just use it for your family every day. There are people who just do this for themselves. Between using some type of medium, setting up a bovida for your ancestors, nine glasses of water, eight in the center, eight with one large one in the center, all filled with water and a white candle, pictures or names of your ancestors on the wall behind it or somewhere on the altar because this is now your holy place in your home. After I finish with these cards, they're going to go on my bovada and sit there for probably another week because I have other cards I can use. But these are just one of the things, one of the processes, one of the traditions and cultures that you could pass to your children. The same way you teach them how to make turkey. <laughs> the same way you show them how you know to string the the, the, the the popcorn at Christmas time or the you know whatever your family's tradition to light the Kwanzaa candles and, and all the things all the things that, that we pass down to our children you know wittingly and unwittingly then let this one be wittingly let these type of practices become part of your family life Pass that down to your children. If you have nothing, at the end of the day, to pass down, no monetary wealth, no generational wealth, if you do or if you don't. But if you don't, you can always pass, give them this. Give them connection to their ancestors. Give them information, the truth of what has occurred the Holocaust that we endured. Make sure that they understand not the watered down version that they want to give them on television or in school books nowadays. Tell them the truth. Our children will know if we tell them. And we have to arm them. And it's not to make them angry. Oh no. It's to make them aware. You want to get woke? That's woke. You got to know where you've been to know where you're going. Again, that's why I, I, I'm offering the services that I offer, which are readings, personal, private readings for yourself, and ancestral readings for those of us who want to get in touch with our ancestors and we don't have a lot of information about them, and they have messages that they want to share with us. So this is how we're going to do it. We're going to um, contact them and use as much information, try to find out as much information as we can by using the search engines that are there already, which I have. So, since I have access to it, I'm willing to share it with you. So, keep that in mind. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing of the Tarot of the Orisha cards today. And um, feel free to get your own deck and then explore for yourself. There are all kinds of other tarot decks out there. I'm going to uh, do another video opening up another one. There are oracle cards and we'll see what that looks like. That'll be next. So for everybody, please, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you. Um, I hope that you enjoy um, these little videos. The uh, email address is ifa midwives at aol.com. I-F-A-M-I-D W I V E S plural if Efa Midwives at AOL.com. I'm on Tumblr, Efa Midwives. Um, and I have my YouTube channel, which you know because you're watching it. And that's also Efa Midwives. Um, till the next time I get to see everybody or you all get to see me in my hands. 
Um, wishing you all peace and love. Alafia, okay? Have a great day. Love you. Bye-bye.